So do the Canarios really say muyayo? When Spanish citizens are polled on what is the sexiest Spanish accent, there are always two winners. The international award generally goes to the Argentine accent, but nationally, all the Spanish are in agreement. Canario, i.e. the dialect of the Canary Islands, is the best sounding dialect. So today, I'm looking at the characteristics of this dialect, what makes it so special, what it sounds like, where it comes from, and what are some of the most common vocabulary. Also, make sure to watch to the end of the video because somewhere along the line I'm going to be answering that age-old question as to whether the Canarios, the people of the Canary Islands, really say muyayo and not muchacho. Many have tried to answer this question. Spoiler alert, the answer is no, the short answer is no. But I will be making an answer which is much more nuanced, it goes into more detail and I think I finally have the definitive answer that nobody will tell you anywhere else. So stay tuned. The origins of the dialect then. Where does el español canario, the Spanish spoken here in the Canary Islands, where does it come from? Well, Spanish has of course been the language spoken here in the Canary Islands ever since the conquista, since the Spanish colonized the islands in the 1400s. The indigenous people of the islands of course spoke their own languages, but apart from a few original guanche words used in modern um, Espanol Canario today, not a great deal of those languages has really survived. So where does the Spanish, the Castilian Spanish come from that is spoken today in the Canaries? Well, the first stage of colonialization, uh, interestingly enough, was featured many boats arriving from Normandy in France, crews made up principally of Normans, and they were captained by Jean de Betancourt, and there is still evidence of a French influence on the language in the Canary Islands today. But probably more significantly, as, um, sub subsequently though, the Castilian crown, when it took over leadership of the colonialization, um, the boats arriving, they were departing from ports in southern Spain, in Andalusia, so like Cadiz, uh, etc. And the crews and settlers were largely made up of people from that region, Andalusia, Andalusia, and Extremadura, which is the uh, com community, comunidad, um, the two provinces next to Andalusia on the Iberian Pen Peninsula. And largely speaking, this is why the Mediterranean form of Spanish became established here, substituting the local indigenous languages completely within a matter of two centuries, something like that. But the Canary Islands have long been a very international place and indeed during this stage of colonialization there was a large Portuguese contingent present here on the islands. Portuguese certainly had an influence but later on as I look into the specifics of El Habla Canaria, um, the language spoken here, I'm going to suggest that maybe the Portuguese influence was a little exaggerated but that's later on in the video. It's also important, of course, not to overlook the Caribbean influence, notably um, the influence of Cuba, Puerto Rico, Venezuela. If you're familiar with Caribbean dialects, like the Cuban dialect, dialect in particular, you can immediately recognize how heavily influenced it is by Canario and centuries of emigration to the Americas and people returning from the Caribbean islands to the Canary Islands have definitely made for a big influence back and forth. The original Spanish from the Canary Islands influence in the Caribbean and sometimes in reverse. So we'll be looking at that too. But let's move on now to what the language, what Canario actually really sounds like and some general characteristics of pronunciation. And I'm going to start off with what's known as ceseo. Ceseo as the alternative to ceceo. And the irony of ceseo is that ceseo is pronounced ceseo because of the ceseo, if you follow me. Well, if you don't follow me, this is what it's all about. The letters Z and C, Z all the time, are pronounced in standard, what we'd call Castilian Spanish from the central regions of Spain, notably around Madrid, etc., is pronounced like an English TH, like a lisping sound. That's why we hear ceceo when it's a C or indeed a Z. Every tourist's favorite word, how I would pronounce it because I live here in the Canary Islands, cerveza, would be in standard Spanish cerveza. So you, you've got this, the C and the Z sounds like an English TH, as I say, ceceo, 
as opposed to Ceseo. This is in all of the islands um, the case, uh, the Ceseo, ceseo the, the non lisping S sound instead of uh, Z, lisps Z and C sound is predominant all through the um, the islands of course and it's also notable again to go back to the roots you look and you find this this is very common in parts of Andalusia and indeed parts of Extremadura and of course nowadays the Canario accent having been exported is now the standard in all of Latin America. Another common feature of the way the Canary Islanders speak is the aspirate pronunciation of an S at the end of words or indeed individual syllables. And an S at the end of words and syllables is often pronounced like an aspirate H sound, the H sound in English rather than in standard Spanish. So, a huh, huh, huh. for example, if we take the words las moscas, means the flies, las moscas in standard Spanish would become here in the Canarians la mosca, por si la mosca. Thousands of tourists arrive in Tenerife each year and spend their holidays in what they think are places called Los Cristianos and Las Américas, only to find out when they arrive here they're actually going to Los Cristianos and Las Américas. Los Cristianos, Los Cristianos, Las Américas and Las Américas. This is common throughout the Canary Isles with maybe the exception of El Hierro, a small island in the province of Santa Cruz de Tenerife, on our side of the islands. And it's um, completely, again, completely consistent with the dialects of Andalusia and Extremadura. My wife's family, um, for example, they're all from Extremadura. And this definitely is a linguistic trait that, that they have. And this did indeed prepare me, give me some preparation for the way people speak when I first arrived here in the Canary Islands back in 2009. So I was prepared, but it still didn't stop me from getting very confused when I met a young woman who was actually from the island of Gran Canaria, um, from the capital of Gran Canaria. She was actually originally from there, but studying here in Tenerife and would often spend the weekends going back to her family home where her parents live in the capital of Gran Canaria. But I, for a long time, understood that she was actually going back to the island of La Palma and not the city of Las Palmas because for us non-native speakers it is still sometimes dif difficult to distinguish between La Palma and La Palma especially when it's a Canariona who's saying La Palma. There's an interesting phenomenon as well in some examples where there's um, an S at the end of one word and a vowel starting the next word um, which is kind of like if you're familiar with French the idea of liaison this um, there's a very very strict rules in there are very strict rules in French about when to do this liaison uh, linking an s and a vowel sound um, from one word and to the next word and uh, this happens also in Canary and Spanish for example um, what would be in standard Spanish los ojos the eyes is not lo ojo, but rather lo sojo, lo sojo. And there's also a contrast to this, it's still, for whatever reason, I have to look into this further, but it's still La América. There's a very interesting story also about there's a place here in the south of the island, south of Tenerife, called Las Eras, to pronounce it properly. Here, of course, it's La Hera, and it's claimed that it was originally actually La Cera, or, or la cera, meaning the wax. I don't know whether it's true or not, but it's a, an interesting story that shows how, because of Canary Island pronunciation, or maybe back then, Andalusian, ex Estremeño, um, Estremeño pronunciation, it kind of got confused. And so I'm not the only one getting confused between La Palma and La Palma, and La Hera and La Cera, La Cera. It's not too easy sometimes. <laughs> Okay, we're sticking with a common theme here. You'll notice that this is common throughout Español Canario, uh, Dialecto Canario, Canary Islands dialect, the aspirate sound. In this case, we're talking about an aspirate sound of a J sound from a Spanish J sound. Indeed, this also applies to the letter G when it's before the vowels E and I. If you have learned some Spanish, you will probably know standard Spanish, a very strong kind of central Spanish accent would be, if we take the word jaque, it means uh, 
check in, Spa uh, in chess, uh, jaque mate, checkmate. And I'm doing my best to pronounce that in standard Spanish. This is a very kind of harsh, uh, throaty sound, jaque, jaque. Well, here in the Canary Islands, it would be more, it would be softer, more aspirate, more breathy, like an English H almost, it'd be jaque, jaque mate. As I say, this also applies to words, sounds beginning with the G, with the G, which have the same phonetic values. So um, words like gente, ginebra. So not gente, not ginebra, but gente, ginebra. Like very much of life here in the Canary Islands, the aspirate pronunciation of a J sound is simply un poquito más relajada. This is again something absolutely consistent with the origins of the language, the origins of the dialect, i.e. the dialects of Andalusia and Extremadura. And now, of course, as uh, El Canario, the standard, the Canarian standard has been exported to Latin America, the colonies. It has become the norm in the Americas too. O sea, no me refiero a la playa de las Américas, sino al continente, al otro lado del charco. And hopefully you are not bored by now about hearing about aspirate pronunciation, breathy pronunciation, because there's one more trait which is very common, and once again, very common in Andalusia and Extremadura, and it's the aspirate, aspirate pronunciation of an H at the beginning of the word. In standard Spanish, an H at the beginning of the word is um, silent, so it's not pronounced at all. Words like hediondo, but here they become rather hediondo. And there's a very typical saying here in uh, the islands that says it's a, ter it's a term to express repulsion at something, to express something that you would never do. And you say, I would never do that, ni harto de vino. Harto instead of harto, meaning not even blind drunk would I do that. Okay, so it's not all aspirate pronunciation and moving on to another feature of the Canary Islands pronunciation that I find really endearing and it's the pronunciation of words ending with an N and a vowel before that with the kind of nasal vowel which is very reminiscent of the French nasal vowels if you're familiar with French and once again, what do you think it's consistent with? Andalusia, Extremadura. The standard uh, central Iberian pronunciation of the word bread, for example, is pan, pan, P-A-N, and it's a normal N sound. But here on the islands, we very often hear pan, pan, almost like a G sound. It's that nasal vowel thing. The um, peninsula Bacilon would become here Bacilon. So ceseo and not ceseo. So we have Bacilon, Bacilon. And uh, Sion, uh, sorry, Sion becomes Sion, etc., etc. This is something which no doubt seems to have originated here, uh, maybe also in Andalusia, but has become notably very strong, uh, strongly established in Cuba, for instance. This is very, very typical of the Cuban dialect. Go and look, listen to people speaking with a Cuban dialect. Okay, so here's the answer to the question you've all been waiting for, the million dollar question. Is it true what the mainland Spanish people say about los canarios? They say, they say, muyayo instead of muchacho, and muyaya instead of muchacha. Well, the simple answer is no, but I've heard this dismissed all too simply by Canarios, Canary Islanders, who don't really recognize that there is a difference in pronunciation. After all, the peninsulares are picking up on something, right? So there's no smoke without fire. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of isleños who pronounce the CH sound like other Spaniards. But if you take the strongest Canary Islands accent, for example, you hear something more akin to, I suppose you'd have to write it like a T and a Y in English. So T-Y together, T, T, or like the T-J sound in the German word for a type of pickled herring. Um, German viewers are familiar with Matthias, Matthias, or the brand Katias, make sweets. Um, so whilst Muyayo is way off the mark, if you said something like Mutiatio, Mutiatio, or Mutiatia, yep getting closer. It's definitely not a solid ch, ch in, in some, um, some, ex some examples, some instances. So next time, you canarios, I'm speaking to you, los canarios, 
When you travel to Madrid the next time and they tell you, you say muyayo and coye instead of muchacho un coche, you'll be armed with a better response than rather than just say, no es verdad, no es verdad. So you're welcome. De nada. While I don't pretend that this video is by any way comprehensive, that was just a look at some of the main characteristics for me of the pronunciation, but let's actually move on to more grammatical content then. And uh, the first thing you'll notice when you're here is a predominant use of what we refer to as the preterite tense instead of a perfect tense. For those non-linguists out there, a quick explanation is it's similar to the English perfect tense in that in Spanish you can use the past perfect tense to use to describe a state in the in the present by referring to something that has happened in the past sometime in the past so like you say in English I have already eaten lunch you probably more you'd say ya he comido in the in on the mainland most of the mainland whereas it would here be ya comí or maybe you should rather say ya almorcé because el almuerzo and el almuerzo el almuerzo en la península are not the same thing whereas the Spaniards from the central regions of Spain um, for them almuerzo is something like a late morning snack like similar to uh, 11s in the UK and in the Canary Islands and where else do you think Andalusia of course Andalusia it's lunch so it's simply lunch I think the Spanish in the mainland would say la comida and it's here el almuerzo. So let's maybe not focus on lunch and we'll look at breakfast. So it's not has desayunado ya, have you eaten breakfast yet? But rather desayunaste ya. No, todavía no desayuné y son las diez y media ya. Tengo una fatiga que te caga. This is a really interesting one because this seems to be something quite specific to the Canary Islands. Whereas in mainland Spain, if you were talking to various, many people, more than one person in the informal tone, you would say, you would use vosotros or vosotras. And in the Canary Islands, we simply don't have this. In general, in the Canaries, and indeed in all of um, Spanish-speaking America now, as this is something that's been exported from here, that isn't actually really seen in Andalusia or Extremadura, for, for a change. And this has been established all over Spanish-speaking America. And basically, whether you're addressing uh, three of your best friends in an informal way, or two bosses in a very informal way, we use here ustedes. Ustedes. There is no vosotros sois or vosotras sois, no vos, vosotros estáis, just ustedes son, ustedes es, están. I'm going to go on a brief tangent here because this is something, the use of diminutive forms in Spanish is a really exciting, interesting, fascinating uh, phenomenon. And uh, But believe me, when it comes to the use of diminutives, the Canary Islanders are simply world champions. We're familiar with the um, diminutive forms in all languages, even in um, um, English there's, there's some, some evidence, even though it's kind of dying out. In German we'll be talking about word, ending, word endings like chen, ul, le, li, for example, so like a little bit is bis, chen, a little bite, literally, or bissel, for example, and even in English, as I say, what is a young pig called? It's piglet. This is the look, this is the diminutive form. So we're all familiar with that in other languages, but of course, these are always nouns. It's a small pig. It is a, a small, a little bit or little something. It has to be an object, a noun. But in Spanish, they go even further with the diminutive forms and they use diminutive forms of adjectives. It really doesn't have any logic, but it kind of is used to co convey this idea of maybe something being a little bit more cute or a little bit more soft or whatever. If you don't think you know what I'm talking about. If you think I've lost you here, well, ever heard the song Despacito? Despacio means slow, but of course it's not a noun, it's an adjective. So making a diminutive of it doesn't really have any sense. If it's slow, can't be small, but it kind of gives this sense of being softer or to quote another song, suavecito. But anyway, getting back to the Canary Islands more, more specifically, the Canary Islands have 
in fact their own very specific way of using diminutives that are even um, shorter than in the uh, Iber on the Iberian Peninsula. You'll hear people, for instance, talk about their car as cochito rather than coche cochecito or cochecito, or maybe solito, a little bit of sun, instead of solecito. Right then, well, first of all, if you've made it this far through the video, thank you very much for making it this far. And I don't know how long we're into the video now, maybe a good 20 minutes or so, maybe even longer. But thank you very much, you are the best. And that, as I say, it doesn't really, I don't pretend that this is a comprehensive video. Um, there's certainly people out there who know a lot more about uh, the Canarian language than me. Maybe you're watching from the Canaries yourself. Are you um, a Canary Islander? Are you from here? Have you maybe visited the island and have, have some things you want to share? What are your favorite aspects of the way the Canarios speak? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. First of all, let me know where you're watching from. I'd be uh, fascinated to find out where you're from, whether you're watching from the UK, USA, from the Canary Islands, from Germany, wherever. And then let me know what you think, what are your favorite expressions, what are your favorite aspects of El Habla Canaria. Right then, as I say, that kind of covers grammar and pronunciation. I'm gonna go and look into now specific things that what um, Canary Islanders typically say. Canarismos, you could say. Here's just a few of my favorites. Um, certainly not a comprehensive list. I've printed out some of my favorite. Palabra Canaria. And it's all in alphabetical order. So let's start off with alongarse. Very common here, alongarse. The, the definition I've got here in Spanish um, Spanish is asomarse. I think this may indeed come from a Portuguese entrance, uh, in Portuguese influence because in Portuguese, alargar, which means to lengthen in Spanish, is alongar. So maybe it's kind of a lengthening of a body. Who knows? Moving on, arrojar, arrojarse, uh, to vomit. The Spanish word for pea, the little green pea that you eat, is guisante, but here in the islands is arveja, arveja. Staying with food, we've got a very special type of potato, which incidentally is papa here, papa, something we imported from, yes, you guessed it, Andalusia, not patata, but papa. We've got a very special type, it's called autodate, autodate. What on earth could that mean? Well, somewhere along the line, it came from out-of-date potatoes from English. As I say, a very international place here. B is for bifo, which is a young male goat, a kid, a male kid. And do you remember that the Canary Islands do not use vosotros? Well, there's a saying that says that a little bifo is killed every time a Canarian uses the word vosotros. <laughs> Bobo mierda. <laughs> Bobo as in tonto, silly, stupid, and mierda. Maybe you don't have to translate it. Buche, buche. Un trago corto, a quick swig, cachanchan. Here it says, alguien que no sirve para nada, que es un desastre, a, dis a disaster of a person, somebody is totally useless. Calufo o calufa, which is an insufferable heat. In the summer, you'll often hear the Canarians complaining about chiquita galufa. Canarion, canariona, inhabitant of the island of Gran Canaria. Cotufa, this is the equivalent of the standard Spanish word palomita, meaning popcorn. It's just the canary way of saying popcorn. That's right, isn't it? All those canariones? Cotufa, right? Chiacho, chiacho. The shortening of the word muchacho, meaning boy, and also used as an exclamation like, oh boy, like uh, um, in American English. Chiacho, tibichanga. This is a man's little willy. The use of the word chico, meaning small instead of pequeño. Algo es muy, muy, muy chico. Yeah, and while chico means small, chiquito, which is small, small, actually means emphasis. It's like chiquito galufo. What a, an insufferably massive heat. So you can also say chiquito, tremendo, or fuerte. Tremendo lío. Fuerte galufo. Chiquita ventolera. Cho. Cho, loco. Chochos. Yes, this has many meanings, look it up, but it's also just, um, uh, they're called altramuses, I think they're called 
I shall put it up on the screen. I can't remember what they're called in English, but um, you can quite um, innocently go into a bar and, uh, and order a portion of chochos with your beer and nobody's going to look at you strange. And this is definitely something that I have heard in Extremadura on the mainland. So this is again very consistent with the importation of language from Andalusia and uh, Extremadura. In the Canary Islands, we do not wear chanclas, we wear cholas. Uh, Choso is the place where you live, your house or your home. Chuchanga is a snail. Chuletada is a tradition, what we would call in the UK wrongly, a, a barbecue. Um, not a real barbecue, it's just outdoor grilling. Um, chuletada, from chuleton, from a cut of meat. And emboste is what you have afterwards when you're completely full. Chiquito emboste, after the chuletada. And fatiga is what you have before the chuletada and before the emboste. It's nothing to do with fatigue, being very tired, it's just really bad hunger. Flaco is maybe what you were before the chuletada, when you had fatiga and no emboste, but flaco is also not just a way of calling somebody thin, a thin person, but like um, mate, it's just flaco, loco, it's just a way of addressing people in a, uh, an informal way. Fleje is un montón, so a huge amount. This is maybe what happened when you went with your fatiga to the chuletada. You ate too much and then you had emboste because you ate a fleje de comida. Fonil is a funnel, <laughs> not embudo. It's a funnel, fonil, makes more sense to me. And fósforo is serilla, uh, a match. Fotingo, this is an interesting one. Fotingo is a word for a vintage car. And apparently the, the story goes that it's from Ford T. Go, another influence uh, of, from English, but the shortened, strange Canarian pronunciation, Fotingo. Fortigo, Fotingo. Vintage car. Gandul or Gandula is a lazy person. Garimba is a beer, so cerveza. So when you come to the Canary Islands on holiday with your prepared tourist um, phrases like tres cervezas, por favor, you can actually say tres garimba. Here on the islands, we don't call drawers cajones, but rather they are gaveta. A godo is somebody who comes from Peninsula. It refers to the fact that the Goths, the Visigoths, they actually arrived, they conquered lots of Europe and arrived as far as um, the north of Spain, lots of Spain, but they never arrived in the island. So now for the islanders, all of Spain are Visigoths. They're Goths, godos. Gofio. This is a typical Canary Island feed, uh, food stuff that goes back to the Guanche times. It's uh, an original Guanche word, in fact, and it's toasted flour made of either wheat or corn or a mixture of both. Whereas in mainland Spain, they will call a bus autobus. Here on the islands, it is una guagua, guagua, but it's bonobus, not bono guagua, for whatever reason. Giri. What is a giri? Well, you're looking at one. Somebody with a passport like this, a foreigner, typically from the north of Europe, so the typical tourists, we're all giddies. Uh, and also, if I have a second passport that looks like this, does that make me a super giri? Ego pico is ego chumbo or prickly pear. Hartada, we're going back to the ni harto de vino. Una hartada is a, a bit like a, an emboste when you fill yourself up with something. Lapa. This is a special Canarian word to refer to a crustacean, like a something like a limpet, a sea, a crustacean of the sea. Um, and there's a very um, famous phrase here that says, el que quiera lapa, que se moje el culo. Literally, if you want to get these lapas, these like limpet type things, you're going to have to get your bum wet. Mago is the equivalent of campesino, so a person from the land who works the land. Mago mierda is an insult. Millo is what we refer to corn as here. So what would be maíz, maíz in the, uh, on the peninsula. This is here millo. Now, a lot of sources will say that this comes from the Portuguese. And while it's true that the word for corn in Portuguese is millo, something very similar. This is also a word that I've definitely heard used in rural Extremadura. But what it is, is what they call um, mazorcas de maíz, what for us here, uh, piña de millo, 
they would use this traditionally as food for the pigs. It's kind of like, it's a delicacy in a lot of places, but for some reason in rural Extremadura, it's unthinkable to eat this millo. Millo is kind of inferior food that only the pigs eat. Niame is not only a yam, the food, but also can refer to your feet. Ñoños, they are also feet, but the ñoños are quite often los ñoños de la ñame. So the toes on your feet. And this list wouldn't be complete without ño, ño, the most typical Canarian exclamation of all. And I think I even use this as my thumbnail. Palique is talk, palicar. Pelete is frío, so cold. And I once set this to a non-Canarian and explained that it actually meant frío, lots of cold. And he said, well, that makes sense because it is a cold that peels your skin. Te pela la piel, te, te pela. Pibe is a young man. Pinga is what a young man has and a young woman doesn't have. Piña, we've already covered that. Piña de millo, mazorca de maíz, corn on the cob. Uh, polla boba, another nice insult. Puntal is actually a term that comes from um, Canarian wrestling, lucha ganaria. The puntal is the best one on the, on the team, the most important um, member of the team. And puntal is used as a compliment. Eres un puntal. You're a real... Great, great guy, whatever we'd say, puntal. Uh, pureta is me, an old fart. Queque is another thing. It's a type of um, cake. It's obviously, phonetically, you hear straight away that comes from the English cake, queque. Rosca, thank you to all the canariones and canariona. If you got this far, I was teasing you earlier saying cotufa. I know that you call popcorn rosca in your part of the world. Ruin. Uh, ruin is bad. You can be a, a bad person, a bit of a uh, cheeky, devilish, kind of naughty kind of person, but also um, the milk, if it goes off. La leche está ruin. It's ruined. Very close to the word um, ruined in English. Talegaso is a big smack in the face. Tennis is what people in the, on the island of Tenerife call trainers or sneakers. Tolete, sometimes I get called tolete. Nothing to do with toilet, it's just a uh, bobo mierda. What about some Canary Island expressions then? Here's a really nice one. A typical way of saying farewell to someone is to say vete por la sombra. So literally, walk in the shade as you go. Make sure you walk in the shade. Kind of nice because obviously the sun here, not too far from the equator, just opposite the Saharan desert, is very, very strong. So it's a nice farewell. Make sure you uh, walk in the shade, don't get burnt. Estaque que apesta, it's very interesting for me, it means something stinks, quite literally, and in the same way as we say, probably more typically in uh, American English, it's something stinks, it's just really, really bad. Agüita, agüita, another diminutive form of the word, the word agua, of course, means water, and little water, for whatever reason, is a typical exclamation in Canarian Spanish, just like ño. Often you'll hear them together, ño, agüita, colega. And if you don't like agüita or ño, you can also use chio. If you find something rather unpleasant, an unpleasant smell, esta que apesta, fos, fo. And another great one, cámbate la pata or cámbate la peluca. Another, uh, they say it's outdated now and I love it. It's kind of, it actually comes from combar. It's not cámbar, pero something, Camba de la peluca, something surprising. It knocks your knocks your wig off off tilt, or or knocks your feet away. La pata, la pata, of course, are the paws of an animal, the legs, hoofs of an hooves of an animal, or whatever. But camba de la pata. There are so many expressions that I've, I really can't get into, and I don't even know because I'm obviously not from here. Make sure you comment down below and let me know your favourite Canarian expressions. And I'll just finish off this video quickly um, to get back to the idea of some of these words actually are that exist today of of Guanche origin, of the um, original peoples, the in, indigenous peoples of the islands, and apparently Bifo, the baby kid, the kid, uh, the goat, baby goat is indeed um, from Guanche. Chola, supposedly, the um, flip-flop is an original word from Guanche. Cotufa, interesting enough, but the Guanches certainly had corn, and so they would probably have also had popcorn, roasting popcorn. They just certainly had their corn to make their gofio. 
Gofio, of course, is a Guanche word, as is fos, fo. The, um, what's this horrible smell? Fo. Uh, Haira, another goat. Goats, we're seeing here, agriculture is pretty important here. Haira is a tame uh, female goat, a Guanche word apparently, and Mago, the campesino, the, the country, I don't want to say peasant, um, person working working the land from the, the agricultural areas, Mago, apparently that is a Guanche word. And finally, some words I mentioned, some things came back from America. La America is not from the south of the island of Tenerife, but the continent of America. Um, batata, um, which is a sweet potato. Guagua. Guagua, as I mentioned, is the autobus, it's the buses around here. And there are lots of theories as to why it's guagua. There's something to do with the word, in, uh, the English word wagon, one wagon, uh, one wagon, guagua. But also there's rumors of a, a bus company that began with uh, the letters WA, WA. Uh, some bus company name used in Cuba. If you have a theory, let me know the theory down below. Uh, what else have we got? Guanajo. Guanajo is a common word, but apparently that came from the Americas back to here. Mm, tonto, bobo, bobo mierda, tolete. We've got lots of words for tolete. Um, mani, meaning peanut, instead of cacahuete, which will be here, here on mainland Spain. Mani, manise. Apparently that is something. And tennis. Tennis obviously comes from sport, the tennis shoes, uh, I think you'll find in the USA people say tennis shoes quite a lot, but here in uh, Tenerife it's just a generic term for sneakers. Well, that's my list done. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much if you made it this way, um, this far through the video, right to the end. If you did enjoy it and you want to see some more kind of this content, please do subscribe, leave me a like, leave me a comment. Um, I'll see you in the next video sometime soon. Thanks again for watching, take care.